Hi. Let me tell you about another great Manning book. Learn Rust in a Month of Lunches, written by David McLeod. This chapter introduces the basics of Rust programming, including comments, primitive types, type inference, printing, variable declaration, code blocks, and shadowing. Rust's focus on the underlying system of a computer is evident even in simple types like integers. The Rust compiler is strict, ensuring your program runs correctly. You can experiment with Rust code in the online playground, and don't worry about warnings for unused code. They're just helpful hints. Comments in Rust are for programmers, not the computer. They help others understand your code and remind you of your intentions. Use double slash to comment out anything to the right, and slash asterisk asterisk slash to comment out anything in between, even over multiple lines. Use triple slash to make doc comments, which can be automatically converted into documentation. Rust's primitive types include integers and characters. Integers can be signed or unsigned with different sizes indicated by the number of bits they can hold. Characters in Rust are Unicode-based. Rust can cast a U8 unsigned 8-bit integer into a char using the AS keyword. Be cautious when casting a large number into a smaller type. Strings are encoded to use the least amount of memory needed for each character. Rust's compiler can usually infer the type of a variable based on its context. However, you can specify a different type by adding a colon and the type after the variable name. You might need to specify a type when the compiler can't determine it due to complex operations, or when you want a different type than the default. Floats are numbers with decimal points, represented as F32, 32-bit floating point number, or F64, 64-bit floating point number. Rust defaults to F64 unless specified otherwise. Like other simple numeric types, you can't use floats of different types together, but you can cast one into another type so that their types match. In Rust, a new program starts with a function called main. The open closed curly braces after main is a code block. The curly braces in print ln exclamation mark captures a variable and changes the output. Functions can return values, indicated by the skinny arrow symbol. Variables can be passed to a function by putting them inside the open-closed parentheses. Variables are declared using the let keyword. A variable's lifetime starts and ends within a code block. You can keep a variable alive by returning a value from the code block. In Rust, you can print simple variables using open-closed curly braces inside print ln exclamation mark display printing. Some variables require debug printing, colon, question mark in curly braces, which provides more information but is less pretty. You can also use colon, hash, question mark in curly braces for pretty printing. To find the smallest and largest numbers, use the type name followed by double colon min and double colon max. Min and max are consts, constants, which are unchangeable global values. When you declare a variable with let, it is immutable and cannot be changed. To make a variable mutable, add mut after let. However, you cannot change the type of a mutable variable. Shadowing is declaring a new variable with the same name as an existing one. The original variable is not destroyed, but it is blocked from access within the same scope block. Shadowing can be useful when we need to carry out a long operation and don't mind using the same variable name over and over again while doing it. That's it for the first chapter. In the next chapter, we'll dive into Rust's ownership system, a unique feature that governs memory management and data handling. Get this book at manning.com.